the original Game Boy Advance was one of the first Nintendo handhelds to get an aftermarket IPS LCD upgrade, as it didn't come from the factory with a backlight. Since then, there has been an explosion of backlighting options for the system, most of which required either some soldering or making modifications to the original shell to fit the new LCD panel. However, we now have a new option, one that doesn't require soldering or cutting your shell, making this a true drop-in solution. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at yet another IPS kit for the original Game Boy Advance. But of course, there is a slight twist. This one is special in that it's essentially a drop-in solution, meaning we won't need a soldering iron, flush cutters, or even a craft knife to install this kit. All you need is your trusty screwdriver. Now just because this kit doesn't require soldering or a modification to the shell doesn't mean it's bare bones in terms of features. It just means that this kit is intelligently designed to include these features while also simplifying the installation process. Now while the installation process is extremely easy, there are some downsides which I'll be getting into later on in the video. So to start things off, I'll briefly go over the parts included in this IPS kit. Then I'll show you how to install it, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and end things by providing you with my overall thoughts. So my donor console for this install is a purple Game Boy Advance, which is a perfect candidate for this type of mod, because as you can see, the screen has a burned polarizer. With the new IPS kit installed, we'll make this console better than new. Now included in this kit is of course the IPS panel itself. It's sized to fit in the shell, of course without modification, but requires the use of aligning spacers to get it positioned correctly. Speaking of which, these are the two included clear acrylic spacers that will do just that. Also included are both a 32 and 40 pin ribbon cable. So this kit will accommodate any AGB001 console. And as you can see, there is an integrated touch sensor which will control the brightness of the IPS screen. Of course, here we have the brains of the operation, the custom driver board PCB. And lastly, a custom foam gasket, which I actually will not be using for this installation. Great, that about covers everything. So without any further ado, let's start this project. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is disassemble the console. There are six tri-wing screws and a single Phillips screw inside the battery compartment. With the rear shell off, go ahead and remove the three Phillips screws securing the motherboard. As you can see here, we have a 40 pin model as designated by the number shown here. This will be useful information to know later on in the installation. Go ahead and delatch the LCD ribbon cable and gently remove the motherboard while also disconnecting the ribbon cable. Fantastic, we can now remove all the various buttons and membranes. If yours are dirty, now would be a good time to give them a good deep clean. Now we need to remove the LCD by twisting the front shell like an ice cube tray. I've decided for this install to try and reuse the original foam gasket instead of the one included with the kit, since the adhesive on the original Nintendo gasket is a little bit weaker. This is great in case I ever want to remove the IPS screen. And this is what it should look like. Now go ahead and install both acrylic spacers, one on the bottom right, and the other on the bottom left. Make sure they are completely flush with the bottom. Next, grab the IPS screen and peel off the protective film. Be sure not to throw the film away, as we'll be reusing it later on in the video, and you'll see why. Now place the IPS panel as far to the right as possible, and so that it sits on top of the two clear acrylic spacers. And this is how it should look. All right, so this kit comes with both a 32 and 40 pin ribbon cable. If you remember, we saw we had a 40 pin model Game Boy Advance, so let's go ahead and use that one. 
Now unfortunately the sensor is a bit too big and we need to trim it just a bit. With a pair of scissors, cut this portion of the touch sensor as shown. With the ribbon cable prepped, go ahead and install it into the driver board PCB. Be sure it is fully seated. Next, place the driver board behind the IPS screen and then plug it in. Again, make sure the ribbon cable is fully seated in the connector. I then use some Kapton tape to keep the PCB from moving around. And this is how everything looks so far. Now go ahead and drop in all the buttons and membranes. Okay, remember the LCD protective film that I told you to save? Well, we're gonna reuse it as an insulating film to ensure nothing shorts out when we install the motherboard. Pretty neat trick, right? Speaking of which, we can now drop in the motherboard. Once fully seated in the front shell, go ahead and screw it in place with the three Phillips screws. Next, insert the IPS ribbon cable into the motherboard and then lock it in place. Then, very gently fold over the touch sensor so that it sits between the ribbon cable and the top of the front shell. This is what it should look like. And also, as a side note, be sure it clears this area since that's where the shell closes and could potentially damage the sensor if it's overlapping. Great, we're almost done. Put the rear shell housing onto the console and then button it up. Drop in some batteries and then give it a quick test. Fantastic. So this was an extremely simple modification. Not having to solder or trim the shell makes for a very pleasant and stress-free process. Now while the installation process was indeed easier, there are some small compromises and features that are missing which would have been nice if they were included, but I'll get into that in a moment. First, let's quickly go over the features of this kit. The primary feature is of course the backlit display. By utilizing the touch sensor, you have a dimming functionality with six levels of brightness. There is unfortunately no pixel mode like we're finding on some of the newer kits that have come out recently. In addition, another nice feature is the fact that you don't need a custom screen lens. I found that this IPS kit fills the entire lens window of a stock GBA perfectly. So now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, as I said before, the installation process is much simpler than many of the alternatives that are out there. You get a fantastic backlit image with overall less work. So in a sense, this is a much more accessible mod. Another great thing about this kit is that it's perfect for backlighting rare variations of Game Boy Advance consoles. Because there is no need to alter or modify the shell, you can add a fantastic IPS LCD to your favorite and rare GBA. Which brings me to the next pro, which is the mod's reversibility. If you ever wanted to revert the console back to factory condition with an original LCD, you can easily do that since there is no modification done to the shell or the motherboard. And the last pro is that there is no need for a custom screen lens. Some of the IPS kits out there require a screen lens that has a larger viewing window to accommodate the image produced by the IPS panel, or one that's offset. Thankfully, this kit is fully compatible with an original screen lens, which again is great for those rare variations of Game Boy Advance consoles. Okay, so let's get into the cons. The first one you may notice is that when set to full brightness, it isn't as bright as some of the other kits out there. Here you can see it next to my funny playing IPS modded Game Boy Advance, and it just pales in comparison. However, there is a way to increase the brightness, and this is done by bridging two legs on the component Q2 on the Game Boy Advance motherboard. As far as I know, this only works on 40 pin models, but this sort of defeats the purpose of a solderless mod, so this really isn't that big of a con. On the topic of screen brightness, another small gripe that I have is that after turning off the console, the IPS resets to full brightness. It doesn't retain the brightness level you set prior to turning the console off. Not a huge issue, but a minor inconvenience. Another small issue is that the kit does not feature pixel mode. We've recently seen more IPS kits come out for various consoles that come with this feature, and it's just unfortunate that this one doesn't. 
The spacers that come with the kit work okay and get the job done, but they do leave a lot to be desired. It would have been nice if they had a more robust 3D printed bracket that would also help align the screen not only vertically, but horizontally as well. And lastly, again a small issue, was the need to trim the touch sensor. While this is an extremely easy thing to do, I can see a scenario where someone accidentally cuts too much or cuts it off completely. While the chance of this happening is low, it would of course be much better if it shipped with the correct size. I'm sure this will be corrected in a future revision. So there you have it. A true drop-in IPS solution for the original Game Boy Advance. As always, I'm curious about what you all think of this IPS kit. Do any of you have a rare Game Boy Advance that you'll be doing this mod to? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment with your thoughts down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.